Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. How are you guys doing? How are you brothers doing? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. 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 That's great. That's great. Alhamdulillah. So brother Muta and brother Amir Junaid Hadith, how are you guys doing? How's your family? May Allah bless each and every one of you. Ameen. 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 Amir, salam, so bro. What's good? Uh, I go salam, salam, What's going on, bro? Hi, hi. Good to see you again, <laughs> man. Hey, hey, it's seven in the morning. Hey, alhamdulillah. Just, seven know. in the morning, mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Hi, Allah reward you, man. Amin. Allah, amin. Allah, amin. Allah, amin. Uh, it's it's an honor to be uh, with both. Uh, uh, I know brothers that have. Uh, Barakallahu feekum. I would like to make this du'a for both uh, and uh, both of you for, for uh, you know, being part of the da'wah of calling people to the right path. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khairan. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, welcome to the the talk of, uh, we want to talk about music. So, we got brother uh, Muta and brother Amir here with us, you know, aka Napoleon, brother Napoleon and aka brother Loon. So, <laughs> I would like to thank the organizers, Revivers, for organizing this program and uh, uh, let's get into it. Are you guys ready? No, alhamdulillah. Sure. Ready, Listen, ready, alhamdulillah. So just a brief introduction of our brothers, our speakers today. Brother Muta, barakallahu feek, Muta was in Shabazz Beal, better known as Napoleon. is a former member of Tupac's rap, Outlaws. So since uh, Brother Beal has uh, converted to Islam and he's now a motivational speaker, barakallahu feek, may Allah bless you and, uh, and reward you for each and every second that you put for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma Ameen. And after a very long time of, of journey, uh, our brother has sold a lot of uh, millions of records and Alhamdulillah, uh, he's, he's part of the family now, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, brother, Alhamdulillah. Khair, you, both of you have done a lot more things that, I can, that I've can that i done, you know, this is what I can say. So brother Amin, brother Amin Junik Muhaddith, uh, Muhaddith, that's known by his name, uh, brother Loon, a former American rapper, formerly signed by P. Diddy's Bad Boy Records, converted to Islam in 2008, alhamdulillah, after a trip to Abu Dhabi, UAE, and changed his name officially to Amir Junaid Muhaddith after traveling to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, after performing Umrah. So, is there anything that, brothers, uh, you want to introduce before we go into the topic deeply? I'm good. Let's get, yeah, let's get a crack. Let's get a crack. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 tea. Have to, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, back on the coffee. Yeah. Uh, see, I was about to have to send you a bag or two, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's coming from you, I'm drinking it, y'all. Exactly. Like okay. it. Thank you, bro. But what I want to say first and foremost is, you know, I want to thank, you know, the brother Mutar, you know what I'm saying, and you as well, Aki, you know, for taking out the time, you know, to try to aid and assist the youth, you know. So, you know, I want to say thank you because the Prophet said, you know, yes. we don't thank the people, we don't thank Allah. So it's important that, you know, we show gratitude every opportunity we get. And, you know, me and the brother Mutar, and he was the first to actually introduce me to, you know, the, the um, opportunities to give da'wah. When I first became Muslim, you know, I was trying to flee with my dean. I didn't want to, you know, <laughs> engage in nothing. And the brother was like, I'm telling you, well, you out the youth, they always ask about you. They heard that you took shahada. I'm like, okay, I'm the last keep, I'm trying to study, I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to learn my religion. He's like, nah, you know, so with his persistence and his patience with me, he finally, you know, the first speaking engagement I gave was me and him, you know, in Queens at Master Little Law. And from there, it was just like, you know, he introduced me to something that, you know, is so praiseworthy and so obligatory upon all of us, you know what I'm saying, to invite the people to Islam and also to remind the Muslims about the beauty of Islam. And inshallah, that's what we'll do today, inshallah. May Allah inshallah, do. Jazakallah khair, bro. We back <laughs> on it like we never left, Aki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's get into it. Bismillah. Yes. So, the, the first part is uh, we're going to talk about the journey from music to Islam, right? How, yes. like most of us, including myself, we are also, I mean, the youth in general has 
their own paths with music. They have their love story with music. So uh, what made you, both of you, leave the music industry? I mean, the whole uh, bling bling and everything. What made you, both of you, leave the industry? Um, should I go first or brother Ben? You be, it was Muslim first. I don't know if y'all hear it. Is it a loud noise in the background? No, it's fine. Everything's good. Okay. Um, Alhamdulillah. You know, when I first accepted the religion of Islam, I came across um, different brothers. I kept hearing, you know, the topic of uh, music and Islam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I pretty much um, used to just brush it off like it wasn't really that serious, you know what I mean? Yeah. Until eventually I ran into some brothers and they just gave me some delay about Islam, you know, viewpoint on music. You know what I mean? One of the brothers, I think um, he's a brother who passed away, a Canadian brother. A mayor, you probably remember his name. Or you probably remember the book. It was a book about music and Islam. I think his name was Mustafa or something like that. If yeah, I'm not Mustafa mistaken. Bilal. Uh, yeah, Canada. Mustafa Bilal from Canada. Yes. Yeah. I'm so when that. I read when I read that book, Halas, man, it, it was just clear to me that you know musical instruments, you know, isn't permissible in the religion of Islam. You know, majority mm -hmm. of the musical instruments, and and so I had to fall back. You know, I had to really say, you know what? Either I came to this religion to try to my best to practice it to the best of my ability. Or am I mm -hmm. going to play around with it and make excuses? So I mm -hmm. decided after making much dua, it wasn't easy. It wasn't like I just, you know, read this book and yeah. was able to put the book down and walk away. I asked a lot to make it easy and aim away from it. So, and then it happened a few years after I accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So what about you, brother, uh, brother Amir? Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Like for me, Similar to the brother Muta, you know, when I came into the religion, I believe I was seeking the exact opposite of the lifestyle that I was living. Mm -hmm. So when it came to abstaining from music, it really wasn't that difficult because everything that coincided with the lifestyle, you know what I'm saying, music was just a component. Because mm -hmm. me and the brother Mutar never did music again, we still would have been entrenched in the lifestyle that came with the music and it came with the music business. So mm -hmm. the trade off is not necessarily just the music, is what's attached to it. So for me, I was trying to exit from the lifestyle and everything that connected to it. Mm -hmm. So the music just became a casualty, you know. And then later on, like the brother, you know, when the proof came to me about the uh, prohibition of music, it just made it, it just solidified the decision that I made to abstain from the lifestyle and the music. And now it became something more praiseworthy opposed to me just trying to self rehabilitate. It became something that was praiseworthy and rewarding, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what we seek as Muslims. We seek the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our actions, you know, should be contingent upon seeking that favor. MashaAllah. I mean, I mean, I mean, alhamdulillah. Uh, it's amazing that that uh, music definitely has has a, a major impact on the way that we walk, we eat, that we speak, and, and lifestyle. Alhamdulillah. Uh, okay, moving on. The, about music itself, you know. Um, how do you leave it? How do you manage to escape the meshes of, of music after being basically, you know, drowned and, and, and twirl around in this, in this mesh? I think um, one, of course, you know, Tofik is from Allah. As yeah. uh, Brother Amir said, man, I think I, I also went through a point in my life, even before I found the religion of Islam, that I didn't mm -hmm. want that lifestyle anymore. I just didn't know what direction to go and how to go about it, you know what I mean? So, you know, so when I found out that music was haram in Islam, man, it was just one of them things that, um, you know, I think I was working on an album with Johnny J. He was a producer of Pac, and um, he produced majority of Pac's songs. So when I found out it was haram, I just finished an album with Johnny J, and I went to him and I was like, look, man, due to my religion, I won't be able to uh, move forward with another album with you. 
but I need you to just, of course, I still, as a Muslim, have to abide to my contract because the guy spent money. I was, I was blinded yeah. by contract. I said, just put the album out and let me go about my business. But I remember yeah. every day I would make dua, every day make dua, or like, get me out of this contract, get me out of the music, let me walk away from it. And one day, man, Johnny J called me probably like six, seven months later. He was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to release you from the contract. I'm not going to put the album out. You're free to go. You don't have to pay me a penny back. And from that day on, I just like, man, since Allah made it easy for me to get out of it in this manner, mm -hmm. I'm not going to look back. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. Wow. That's just amazing. What about you, Brother Loon? What was what was the method, the, the, the strategies that you had to go through, that you uh, implemented? Well, for me, it's like, I was, like I said earlier, I was trying to escape. You know, I was trying yeah. to escape, you know, the lifestyle that comes with the music business is something that many of the youth can't really fathom or really understand because your attachment to the music is from the perspective of a family. Mm -hmm. But we're the actual individuals who are creating it. Yeah. By creating it, there's other things that come from that creation. You know what I'm saying? We're True. in the homes of everyone who invites music into their life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So from that one point, it becomes this source, you know what I'm saying, or this resource, rather, mm -hmm. that can used to everything that comes with music yeah so you come to the understanding of what it is you're actually doing first and foremost and what is contributing to and any man that has any morals you know what I'm saying fathers like me and the brother you know we have to take in consideration the effects or accountability you know what I'm saying for our act and what we're contributing to is what we put out there we can't say that our immediate family is exempt from it. Mm -hmm. Because actually they're the ones in closest proximity to the home. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So all of this has to be considered when making a decision. Because this is what men do. You know, boys have doubts. Boys straddle and try to figure things out. Men have to figure mm -hmm. out exactly what it is, you know what I'm saying, that's going to be conducive to, you know, bringing a harmonious environment to your home, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And the extension of that, is what reaches the people. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so. What we used to do was the exact opposite. We were yeah. bringing all of that into the home, and then we had the yeah. people out there going crazy. True. And so, look at the guidance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He changed our lives, and then we put that same methodology in reverse. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And applying it in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah is what makes it even more praiseworthy. And that's right, you're right. So, so, so yeah, that was definitely for me. I've always tried to, you know, I pride myself on being responsible. I pride myself on being accountable, you know, and I pride myself on being what it entails to be a man. So mm -hmm. that was the motivation. And then it only increased with Islam. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, subhanAllah. You know, here, here, I mean, uh, I mean we can see that how music actually uh, impacts and affects the mind of the people, especially the youth and so forth. Uh, financially, how, how did it actually, uh, how do both of you, with your respect, uh, manage to also, you know, with, with the fame and popular, uh, popularity and, and whatnot, so how do you put that aside? And as you mentioned, Brother Loon, that seeking the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, with the dunya on the tips of the finger, Right, and we put and both of you put that aside. This is, I think, is a good uh, tip and a good point here for for those who are, assume youth uh, here, even in Malaysia or in, in other countries, would expect that you know. I think through music they can be so famous, but what is your way method? You know, I think after after having all those those wealth, uh, tips your finger, and you put that aside and do it for the sake of Allah. Because, you know, Allah doesn't tell us to neglect dunya. You know, Allah says in the Quran that we ask for good in this life, good in the next life, and save us from the fire. So mm -hmm. as a Muslim, no matter what, you know, we have to seek provision. And Allah is the one who's in control of provision. It's not the music industry. It's not the CEOs of the music industry. Our risk comes from Allah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, financially, for example, with me, it was difficult. You know, I, I hit literally rock bottom because I had to walk away 
in the music industry, we get these royalty checks every six months. And when I found out that this was haram uh, to feed my family, I had to cut off from that. You know what I mean? And I hit, when I say I hit rock bottom, I was sleeping on my brother's floor, but I knew for a fact that Allah's promise is true. And that I, you know, the brothers kept reminding me, if you do something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you something better in return. You know what I mean? So, you know, we have to realize that for those of us that's going through that, because you might have people that's watching us right now. And sometimes we get this a lot, that there's a lot of youth that they caught up in they, they means a way of living is haram. And they're afraid to leave that because they saying, how else am I going to provide for my family? We have yeah. to realize that Allah is the one who provides. Allah is our rizaq. The provision comes from Allah. And the closer we are to Allah and trying to do what's right, you know, trying to follow the religion of Islam to our best of our ability, doing toba when we slip, uh, the risk is guaranteed. Allah is going to come through for us. And he showed that, you know what I mean? I, I, I seen that, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah is the one that provides. Allah is going to come through. We just got to try to, you know, uphold our end of the bargain to the best of our ability, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Alhamdulillah. Like the brother we, said, you know, like Allah says in the Quran, he says, and whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make a way from him, you know, to get out. So taking these things into consideration, like the brother said, we know that the speech of Allah is true. We know that the promise of Allah is true. So for me, abstaining from those things, once again, seeking the bounty of Allah, seeking the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, saying like when Allah says, You know, if you are patient and have taqwa of Allah, nothing from their plots can harm you. So this becomes a shield from all of the things that's in opposition of your growth, all of the things that's in opposition of you making the choice to abstain from something for the sake of Allah. Allah says nothing from their plots will harm you. So when we take these things in consideration, you know, we start to place our trust in Allah and our statements and actions start to follow that state of tawakal. You know what I'm saying? And then having talk of Allah, fearing the things you know that Allah forbid, this also contributes to the motivation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to use you know the religion of Islam to navigate through the dunya. Like the brother said, you know, the complete dunya is not haram to us. You know, yeah. it's just things that Allah forbid we must flee from. True. But, you know, there's nothing in Islam that tells us we can't seek provisions. And if Allah provides some of us more than others, you know what I'm saying, it's not for us to feel, you know, uh, 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 ashamed of what Allah provided. Just know that it may be a test with it, you know. Yeah. But in all actuality, you know, we can't have, you know, a, a sustainable life without seeking provisions from Allah. Yeah. But the boundaries that Allah put in place is what we have to be mindful of. And that's where the discipline comes in. The discipline comes with knowing those boundaries and knowing the consequences if we exceed those boundaries. You know what I'm saying? But Allah gives us, you know, by his infinite mercy, you know what I'm saying, and wisdom, he gives us a lot of space we got a lot of space. So this, this is why this is why the punishment is just because there's a lot of space there, you know what I'm saying, to, to do what's permissible and obtain what's needed. But when you see that, you know, you can't look at everybody else and say, you know, it's y'all for, you know, you know, y'all y'all bought all these books I wrote or whatever it is, you know, it ain't y'all for it. It's alhamdulillah, you know, this is from Allah. So, you know, yeah. I believe that you know the commonality that me and the brother shared coming from that lifestyle is that yeah first and foremost we were so entrenched in it and so immersed in it that mm -hmm. we understood the shaitan and all his yeah. way more so than many of the youth who were born muslim y'all curiosity yeah. is so heightened but ours is like we curious to know what's you know what, what, what's in your life we curious to know who i favored you with from birth you no, know, you was given some. Know. Look what it took for us to get God here. We had to be in, you know, you know, we had to be entrenched in violence, drugs, music, everything that contradicts Islam. Subhanallah. So we Allah. wanted to get away from that. Allah. We wanted your life, and you want ours. Our old life stuck for the law. I mean, you know, say we want your life. You know, 
I tell the brother Moot all the, all the time, man. I can't wait till they get these restrictions off me. I would love to come to the coffee shop every morning and shout. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want you walking around. Here, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you'll be here soon. Nah. You right? We give you the key, y'all. Can you add a key? Inshallah. 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 So, yeah, you know, real talk. I'm I got, God. yeah, I got, yeah, I got children that's not Muslim. You know, yeah. no, may Allah guide them. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but this is this is this is serious for us. You know, reverting to this deen. You know, we we have to encounter a lot of things. So for us to come out here and try to warn you first and foremost of you know the consequences of trying to fall into this space, this dark, dark space that removes you from the security of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It removes you from his favor, from his bounty, just for some temporary, you know, thrill or excitement. Say Allah. Say Allah. Well, that's, that's, that's a, wow, that's, it's like, a, honestly to me, when you say that, brother, you give me the goosebumps. May the people take heed of this, you know what I mean? Allah, I mean, Allah, I really hope that those who are watching this, this, you know, this discussion, the youth, especially, you know, these are people who are, are on the who are on the field. They're they're saying this, you know, stay away from this. What else can what else do you want to 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 have a cake that says, you know, don't enter? <laughs> Something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. JazakAllah khair, Brother Loon, for, yeah. you know, for reminding me first and foremost as well. JazakAllah khairan. Reminding all of us, man. We, all, we all, need, all need these reminders, Aki. You know what I mean? Allah Akbar. You know, that's, that's deep. That's really deep, you know. Oh, I'm, nah, baffled. I'm, I'm nah. baffled. I'm oh, baffled. Cool. Allah malak alhamd. Allah malak alhamd. Amen. Allah malak alhamd. So, we, we talk about, alhamdulillah, with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, we talk about how both of you managed to escape and, and you know, remove yourself from, from that trap of the devil with the strings and the voices and the, and the, the uh, haram money and so forth. And, and now we want to go into the music in Islam. You know, this is one thing that everyone's like, you know, the music is, you know, khilaf here and khilaf there, you know. Some scholars say this, some scholars say that. What do you define music as? Mm -hmm. Well, from what, you know what I mean? What, from what I read and what the ulama, yeah. you know, the scholars, because yeah. as our brother yes. mentioned, we just, we just hear as, um, you know, motivational speakers, man, and not any scholars or nothing like that, or you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, but, I understand. Uh, yeah. You know, from what Islam, from an Islamic perspective, the people of knowledge said that every musical instrument is haram except for the duff. And they said that duff is allowed for women to play and beat in front of other women. The duff is a drum type of instrument, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was allowed yeah. for women to beat in front of other women for like weddings, on occasion of mm -hmm. Eids, and things mm -hmm. like that, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's also a misconception that there's a difference of opinion when it comes to music being haram. You know, there's yeah. no difference of opinion from the earlier Muslims, from the Sahaba, from their Agreed. students, from the four Imams. You know what I mean? The difference of opinion came later, but they wasn't deriving this opinion from Quran or the Sunnah, from the Sahaba, sure. or this, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the earlier Muslims. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of the things, man, that, um, as you mentioned, by the permission of Allah, me and our brother, Loon Amir, um, we was able to get away from that, the traps or whatever, but doesn't mean we, we safe, you know what I mean? No Muslim is safe until we two feet in Jannah, inshallah, because we Allah. leave the music industry and we also struggling with other things and we're going to be tested with other things. So yeah. we don't want brothers, we don't want people to think that, you know, me and our brother, we striving. May Allah give us two feet. We still I striving. mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and, 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 and there's people that are striving with music and they try to leave the music industry, man. Islam is clear about its stance on music. If they're really sincere with it, just go research and, you know what I mean? They will see it clearly, inshallah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Alhamdulillah, you know, like the brother said, there's no room to wiggle in this situation. You know, this only comes from misguided scholars who, you know, mislead the people into believing yeah. that there's some permissibility with something that the Prophet saw in Salem, his companions, and the virtuous generations of Muslims that followed them in totality and truth, they all yeah. forbid it. And in the yeah. brother book, Mustafa Bala al Kennedy, he gives a proof of the statement of all four imams. So no one can hide behind a meth hat and say, you know, I'm a Maliki Muslim and you know, <laughs> alhamdulillah is good for us. Or I'm a Shafi, say I'm a Hanbali, a Hanafi, whatever it is. You cannot hide behind no none of the Mathahib and say that yeah. this is permissible. Because even yeah, their yeah. statement, they condemn and forbid music. So True. obviously this comes from the Khalaf, those that came after. These, this comes from, not the Salaf, you know, this came from misguided individuals, may Allah guide them to rectify their affairs, who placed these seeds in the hearts of the believers to believe that something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid has now became permissible. You understand? You know, this is, this is, this is a fallacy in so many different levels, you know? Mm -hmm. But like the brother said, we're not scholars, we're not students of knowledge. Yeah. I don't like yeah. to, 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 to place any, you know, burdens on my shoulders, knowing sure. that I'm a Muslim and die in need of Allah's mercy every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm still striving every day to better myself, but this Islam is the platform and the blueprint to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want nobody to think, you know, we're sitting here posing to be more knowledgeable or more righteous or more <laughs> upright. But the reality of it is this. If you yeah. truly love what Allah has favored you with, then you will, you know, try to acquire everything that assists you or aids you in protecting you. And that's knowledge. You know? If it's right. only for your own protection. Does it mean you have to go out there and, 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 and you know, teach the people, you know, but you do have to teach what you know. So, mm -hmm. You know, you do have to teach what you know. So what yeah, me and the right. brother has derived of understanding, knowing that we came from this place, knowing that we'd be questioned about this place, not just in this life, but in the next as well, it only mm -hmm. makes sense for us to study and learn so that we can safeguard ourselves and our families and then safeguard the people from falling into this trap. So. Yeah. To sum it up, you know, music is haram. There's no room to wiggle. There's no <laughs> no crack doors. <laughs> windows. Straight like it's, that. It's, it's, it's no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You know, not so permissible. Yeah. And also, you got to remember, Aki, this is, um, it's coming from, a, you know, like myself and Brother Loon. If yeah. anybody wanted music to be halal, it probably would have been us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we was in the midst of this stuff. Yeah, so, we would have been the one sitting yeah. at the feet of the guy that was saying that it's permissible. We'd be sitting at their feet. We have no agenda. It's not like, it's, from both standpoints of view, it's not like Loon, I mean, our brother Mayor, and myself, we accepted the religion of Islam. We was declining within our music careers, you know what I mean? It was at the height of both of them, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? So it's a reminder that if two brothers that was immense of this music industry, accepted yeah. the religion of Islam is saying that we did our research to the best of our ability and we came out yes. to this conclusion. It's not that we want yeah. to make things difficult on you. We really feel like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a we have to let the people know the truth yeah. about music and industry, coming from people that was in the music industry, that was on millions of records being sold. We have no agenda yeah. by telling the, the youth to stay away from it. We know the ins and out of that business. We know the evil yeah. of that business. So it's the sincere yeah. advice that we are trying to give to the Muslims, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, you're right. When I, when I deal with the Muslims, you know, my heart is way more inclined. So what may be perceived as firm or harsh, you know, I ask Allah, you know, to soften your heart for what, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the intention is mm -hmm. to warn you or remove you from treading a path that leads to gradual destru destruction. 
Yeah. When I deal with the non-Muslims, because I'm in America, and I bump into a lot of these artists, I don't even know half of these guys. <laughs> they always tell them, look, man, I'm a throwback, man. I don't know nothing. Man. But I try, to be, I try to be patient with them because what's yeah. more important for them to understand is Tawheed. Yeah. Right. Right. Because yeah. when you look at how the religion was established, the Prophet Sallallahu he called oh, it Tawheed for 13 years straight. To build up the iman of the people so they can accept the prohibitions. So True. when I'm among you know, Muslims who enter this stuff, I try to like open up a door to talk about Tawheed. Because I know if oh, I go straight to the juggler, you know, not only will they reject, you know, my yeah. my, my, you know, my opposition to, to music, they'll yeah. probably reject, you know what I'm saying, the source of it, which yeah. is Islam. So, it's you true. know, and, and that is a dawah, you know, just so people know. You know, yeah. that's I will, never, I will never compromise my mm -hmm. dean, you know what I'm saying, for the pleasure of the people. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's right. anger, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end yeah. of the day, you know, when it comes to the believers, you know, and this is my disclaimer, I'm letting you know, you know what I'm saying? I may say it <laughs> smiling because I want good for you. That's what my face say, but my heart is saying something else. My heart is saying run. Yeah. My heart is you know, put it down right now, like, you know, but, you know, we all have to be moderate with one another. We all have to be patient with one another, like the brother Mutar said. Eventually, we both ended up at a place where we don't deal with music at all. It may have taken yeah. him a little bit. It may not have taken yeah. me that, you know what I'm saying? But the reality of it is, if you look at the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we both abstain from it, and we both coming from rival organizations. Rival. No, let's not Different. forget. Yeah. Bad boy did Suck. not get along. Oh. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people only know about Biggie and Tupac. There's a whole lot of other people who died mm -hmm. from that, you know, that rivalry. Yeah. The only yeah, ones yeah. that knew was the best of them was, you know, at that time was B.I.G. and Tupac. Mm -hmm. But didn't stop there, you're right, Akhi. Yeah, it was a lot of unknown unrecognized trauma that came from that. And this is what we, me and this brother experienced. Mm -hmm. So y'all just look at Biggie and Tupac and think the show goes on because Jay-Z came out. Well, this guy came <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, y'all buried Biggie and Tupac, but we buried Biggie and Tupac and a whole bunch of other people that you don't even know. Yeah. yeah. So this is bigger than that. This is bigger than music. Yeah. So this is this yeah. whole thing. This was a spread through many homes on many different levels. Some people mm -hmm. still, you know, grieving because of their son they lost, minus Biggie and Tupac. Everybody got over that at some point. Yeah. You know, when you want to just pay your homage to them, the people they just press play. Mm -hmm. But you got other people who still got their son's, you know, memory and so on and so forth to try to hold on to. Mm -hmm. because of what took place so you know these are all of the different things that a lot of you young people don't recognize is that it's so much more to it yeah. it's not as simple as honing in on just what the music can tell first and foremost look at the prohibition of it Allah said it's forbidden it's forbidden that's it that should be enough for you but if you yeah. need more allow me to retort there's a lot of people who died behind this stuff yeah. so, so, you can't yeah. take this Celebratory moment, yeah. It's definitely, you can't take it as a celebratory moment when there's misguidance mm -hmm. involved. There's yeah. a lot of things that contribute to this, and none of it is good, yeah. For the Muslims, because some of you know better and won't do better, some of you don't know and want to do better. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, the reminder will sit in your heart, you know, because this is serious Shalom. matter. Inshallah, Jazakallah, mm -hmm. Kiyaki. Yeah, I missed this. Okay, I miss. I miss. I miss hitting the dawa with you, bro. <laughs> we had we had a few dawa tours together. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> when are you guys coming to Malaysia after this whole uh, Corona year of Corona? Inshallah. Inshallah. Once everything Allah. get back to normal, here, here. you know what I mean. Yeah, normal. Allah, I mean, Allah, I mean. I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to preserve the world. No problem. And the corona when it's gone, you know, we, we never know. Like it, it'll be gone, and 
They be saying you still can't go to Malaysia. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we, we met. Have- we 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 went to Malaysia together, nah. I went there. I don't know if you was there when I went. You went yeah, I though. Think, I, I, I think I went after you. You hooked me up with the yeah. people after you came. After you went, stop. We ain't gonna talk about. We hook each other up, man. <laughs> hey, no turn. Hey, Move your turn. Amir, your turn. Yeah, I'm doing that. And I make the days ahead better. I mean, I'm I mean, all running. I'm all running. I'm all running. I'm all running. So you know, let's. You you. Alhamdulillah, both of you. Barakallahu feekum. I mean, at least have some, some. Uh, you know, you shared some information about uh, about the, the the matter of music. You know, so the sounds actually made by musical are they instruments or voices as well? You know, like so that like those the youth who are listening to this they can understand and define. Oh, it's either it's voice or voice and music and musical instrument or it's musical instrument. Maybe our brother may collaborate on it. Of course. Like we mentioned, the people knowledge touched on musical instruments. When it comes to yeah. imitating the uh, music using the voice, I don't really know too much about. I can't answer on that. You know what I mean? Well, for what I understand, and Allah knows best. You know, the voice obviously is something that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has given us. Yeah. Now the content in which you yeah. use that voice, and the content. Now, you know, if you listen to hip hop, turn off all the beats and listen what's coming out of these guys' mouth. No, yeah, that's not, not permissible. It's not permissible yeah. to talk about fornication, it's not permissible to talk about intoxication, it's not permissible to be rapping or singing about shuruk or kufr or any of these things that expel you from Islam. So, once yeah. again, it's these boundaries. Now, as far as instruments, the brother gave you, you know what I'm saying. A clear proof yeah. that the only instrument that's permissible for us to use is the duff. Yeah. And it's not us, it's the women. Yeah. You know, to play in front of other women, preferably during the times of, you know, weddings, walimas, you know, during yeah. the evening, which, you yeah. know, the yeah. explains, you know, this, this, this taking place in the presence of the prophesied son during the evening. Yep. So we have our evidence, you know, we have our evidence. So, to think that once again these instruments can be utilized mm-hmm. for the sake of a law and the nut that pure intention is nullified by the deed true yeah you're right like, like the famous yeah. hadith you know the prophet said you know what i'm saying very, very yeah. every you know intention is followed by an action. Yeah. Well, in the uh, in every intention, you know, say so everyone and in, in everyone gets that which he intends. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying to the end of the hadith. Right. right. So what we derive, and many of the early men they derive from this 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 this, this hadith, is that it explains to us what is necessary in order to establish a praiseworthy deed mm. that the deed has to be solely for the sake of a law mm. or the intention has to be solely for the sake of a law and the deed has to be in accordance to the son of the prophet mm. and they have to be simultaneous yeah. but you can't have a pure intention and do a deed for other than you know what I'm saying and, and, and something that contradicts the son then yeah. the reject it yeah but you can't have Attention for other than a law, but the deed is in accordance to the sunnah. It is rejected. Yeah. Yes. So this closes those doors once again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're misguided individuals, may Allah guide them, uh, have Allah. led the youth astray. Mm-hmm. And left it up to brothers like us and brothers all around who are yeah. sincere and calling to Allah's deen. We've been yeah. We're left with the responsibility of trying to rectify these matters. Mm. Understand? So, nah, inshallah, you know. Zakallah khair. Barakallah fikum. I mean, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward both of you, your your, your entire family, with, with uh, forgiveness and, and barakah for, you know, sacrificing your time, your energy for uh, and informing and warning the youth and the people about the dangers of music. So moving on, 
uh, I think we've also talked about what does uh, Islam has uh, you know has to talk about or has mentioned about uh, about its position of music. Now, uh, what is it? I mean, from your uh, understanding, Barakallahu Fikum, May Allah bless both of you. Um, playing music and listening to it. No, right. First, we were discussing about music itself. Now, maybe some of us or some or the majority of the youth could have say, "No, I'm not playing music. But I'm listening to it." Right? What about that? Well, yeah. Not diff- playing music, but listen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's the difference. So, you, yeah. know, yeah. you, you know, he playing music even if he's not listening to it. He might be spreading sins. You know, he might he might yeah. be. You know, those who are listening to it might be getting he might be getting their sins. You know what I mean? And and yeah. without even knowing it. You know what I mean? But um. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's like somebody saying, I'm selling weed, but I ain't smoking it. It's still haram. It's haram. <laughs> yeah. no, it's still haram. Yeah, yeah. Allah, he did the narration. Yeah. Abi Bakr al-Sadiq, mm. he didn't even want to listen to the recitation of the Quran from a person who was upon innovation. Like the seller, oh. they didn't even want to listen to the recitation of the Quran if it was being recited by a person, a bid'ah. So this is the book of Allah. Yeah. Because the fear of what may have sept- seeped in their hearts from this individual, not the actual oh. speech of Allah. So this tells you, you know, how oh. the extent of how the companions and those who follow them in faith, how they were took these tedious measures to protect yeah. themselves. You That's understand? Right. So now I didn't impress play, but I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening, yeah. right? This is not yeah. only entering my ears, it's entering my heart. Heart, yeah, that's right. Not because yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. It's time to praise a lot. Like, I go on to Takbir al you know what I'm saying? And the only thing I'm hearing is what I just got through listening to five minutes ago. I can't even, yeah. my khushua is twisted. I can't. Because all of my thing in my mind right now is what I was just listening to, even though I didn't press play. <laughs> no, but this yeah. is what I'm listening to. The beat, yeah. I can't, you know, this this is this is you know, people have the misconception of where the music lands. It's not just True. in your ear, you know. This is just the gateway. What goes in here goes down to here. This is why when we listen to the Quran, it softens the heart. Mm-hmm. The ears don't take precedence over the heart. So when it goes into the ear, it goes here. The so, heart, yeah, that's right. It affects. So how could you have two things that contradict themselves reside in the heart at the same time? How you're could right, you, you're right. One got to one go. No. Yeah, one got to one go. One got to go, man. Yeah, no, you're right. got to go. You're right. So now if you're not pressing play, but you're listening a lot, yeah. it's the same effect if you press play to listen. Yeah, you're right. If you're listening a lot without pressing play, mm-hmm. right? But you're not listening to the yeah. Quran as much as you're listening to this without pressing play. Mm-hmm. And that means you consumed your heart with something that is now repelling the Quran. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. so you know, these things, you know. When I hear it, and I know these are legitimate questions, don't get me wrong, I'm not taking no offense to these questions because yeah. you have so, among us, may Allah make us better, uh, those who are ignorant to a lot of things that come to the religion of Islam. Mm-hmm. Just to be fair, we're all ignorant. So, you hear some of the other men tell you, you know, that they still, students of knowledge, we call them scholars, they still deem themselves to be students. We the one that raised them to Sheikh. <laughs> Alam. Yeah. He's a noble, you know, a, a, a status for them. Yeah. You know, saying from amongst the people. So, yeah. But how they view themselves as students. Yeah. That's the humility yeah. that comes with the knowledge that Allah favored them with. So Allah that their character is still one of humbleness. Allah. So now when we look at this situation. 
We have to be patient. We have to be considerate. And many of us are still ignorant to our own religion. Whether you were born Muslim, whether you reverted to Islam, these things do not define the magnitude or capacity in which you understand the religion. Allah. Understand? So an individual who may have, you know, this intense curiosity of what the answer might have been, because mm -hmm. he may be, you know, entrenched in this, 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 this particular sin, thinking that, listen, I don't press play. <laughs> so, I go through this. Well, I, I go, I'm in America. So, I go in the so, barber. Yeah. I can't tell the barber. Yo, turn, turn it turn off. So, yo, the whole barber had to fight the whole barber shop. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So I'm going to have a haircut for nothing. How you going to give me a haircut? When I got bumps <laughs> all over my head, you just heard it in. You just heard it with no hickma. Yeah. Oh, well, if I have come. to get a ride from somebody, come, come. which I've had to a couple times. Oh, yeah. Somebody, this, cool. this is we was talking about you, man. This is my one of my employees, Adrian. Who that? Hey, bro, What's it? Who's that? You know that? Yeah. You know him? What's loons? All right. Yeah. <laughs> What's He's Muslim. Mashallah. <laughs> Oh we, went, we went for you. We went for him to take shahada. I was telling them right. about you a couple of days ago, but they already know who you are. They they from Philippines. He said, "I've been watching the videos." Inshallah, he will become Muslim one day. Inshallah. I mean, So you know, I've been in the car with individuals. Mm -hmm. I can't tell this man in his car. He doing me a favor. Yeah. So yeah. Gotta have hikmah, gotta have wisdom in situation. Yeah, these situations are way more repetitive in the West. And yeah, like, Charlie told me some stories about how this stuff done spread to the East. And then from there, you know, I lived in a Muslim country. You know, yeah. I know, I've been to Malaysia, you know what I'm saying? I've been to a lot yeah. of Muslim countries, and this stuff is widespread. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, Unfortunate. You know, Alhamdulillah, you know, yeah. Once again, we're going to close that door again, whether you press yeah. play or you just <laughs> listen. It's so, you know, it's still going right. to that heart. You know what I mean? Jazakallah yeah. care, man. Allah reward you, brother. I mean, Allah, I mean, Allah, I mean, you're right. You know, even even in the toilets, in the shopping mall. Can I come mall, right here. back, brothers? One second. Yeah, um, sure, sure. Okay. Take your time. Yeah, you're right, brother Loon, or brother uh, Amir, is that um, like uh, even in the, the, the toilets, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't understand the the the, uh, the wisdom of, of playing music in the toilet when someone's doing their business. It's like, I mean, why? Why would you do that? Uh, trying to get people more uh, deviated, you know, not remembering Allah. I mean, I think that's the main purpose, so that you don't remember Allah, you forget Allah, you don't, you're not conscious of your your deen, right? So this is uh, one of the things that we face and wearing out of the Bilal, may Allah preserve us. I mean. So um, I, I wanted to ask you about the, the, the method that you actually approach people when, for example, you were in a cab, right? Um, a person, a brother was driving you around uh, and may, uh, maybe most probably he turned on the music or in the barber shop. How do you actually approach him? Depending, actually on the, him? Yeah, yeah. depending on the individual, you know, for somebody that I know and they respect me, then mm -hmm. you know, I could just ask, you know, like, you know, I don't listen to music, man. You know, it's not really a long journey we going on. You know, you mind like putting it down for like 10 minute duration of the trip, you know, saying that, you know, you know, because, you know, you have to respect people's belongings, yeah. respect people's space, and you have to respect people's lifestyles. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to condone them, but we respect them until we can't respect them. Meaning that there's limitations even to how much we respect something that contradicts Islam. Because if it yeah. becomes too burdensome for me, I'll just ask them to pull over, let me get out. Wow. And I, I'll just get out. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, they got Uber now, you know? <laughs> you know, Uber is a service. So if I'm paying for a service and I'm asking <laughs> yeah, you, you uh, yeah, I'm paying for it. Right. Yeah, bro. And when you with a friend or somebody that you know, homie, like he might not be Muslim, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You might want him to accept Islam, so you have to use the heck to sure. you know, get him to understand because what it does is starts a conversation. Like, yo, let me ask you a question why you don't listen to music? Yeah, why it's you good. Music no more? 
and it opens the door. Yeah, true. First and foremost, you know, because music is haram and it's not. And they'll say, oh, but you know, you know, you got this brother out there doing music. You got the brother Freeway <laughs> out there doing music and you got this and that, right? So at yeah. that, I'm like, well, that's between him and Allah. No, true. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to condemn the brother even though his tune is open and outward. You know, I can't make an excuse for something that's obvious. Mm -hmm. You know, but the yeah. same thing, I make dua for him. Yeah, and I nah. tell people that his affairs with Allah. He's still uh, Muslim. Uh, Alhamdulillah, he's still Muslim. You no, know, listening uh, to the music doesn't remove him from Islam. He's still Muslim. So, yeah. He's still my brother in Islam. That's right, right? That's right. That's right. But, you know, we have to just be mindful of what our intentions are. We're not here to tear each other down. We're here to build each other up. Yeah. So, but if it's a situation where a person don't want to build and they want to be content with something that's deviant or something yeah. that deviates from Islam, then we remove ourselves from that individual and we make dua for them. That's right. That's right. That's the way. But it may be a time he may make toba and so I have some, you know, something back, you know, something left in the reserve tank that I can embrace him and hug him because he <laughs> made oh, he ain't made toba for me. You know, he exactly. made toba for Allah. Yeah. Wow. When a person rectifies their affair with Allah, that's something that's praiseworthy. I'm just like, Allah, yeah. I'm just like, I was waiting for you. I was getting And that's how we should be. So, you know, I'm just Not that nah, the God is not the you know, so brother, uh, brother uh, Muta, we were just talking about, you know, how would you approach uh, Brother Hamid Jazakallah here, brother uh, Amir, for for sharing no, your thoughts and idea and methods. Well, we were just talking about how would you approach a brother or a person, uh, whether they're Muslim or not. Uh, you know, uh, let's say they turn on music, you know, in, in their car when they're dropping you somewhere or on their cell phone, and you're sitting beside them. How would you approach? Uh -huh. Or they play music in the coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will somebody come in the coffee shop? Go. Playing Sorry. music loud. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. Well, how like, do you? Like the brother say, you... like you know what I mean. With, depending on the circumstances, you have to have wisdom. You have to have wisdom, and um, like if somebody come in the shop playing music loud, of course, you know I have a right to tell them to turn it down, and um, yeah. you know at least don't disturb the other customers. You know what I mean? Because even here in the Middle East now. You'll be shocked at what's happening. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, right. And like, like our brother said, man, when you get into the car, you know, I usually try to play it off. Like, if I get in the car with a non-Muslim, he blew up in music. I like, I want to talk to him. Yo, so where you been? I turn the music down. And I'm yeah. like, so how you been? I just, <laughs> I just turn the music down. down. But if it's a Muslim, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I, I, like, I like our brother Mir said, man, we just be straight up with him, like, you know. I'll keep I know, turn the music I down and you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have family members who are Muslim and still listen to music. You know what I mean? And it's all about hikmah. It's all about, like our yeah, brother said, right. man, it's all about calling the people. Like he said, we're not here to tear each other down. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's about what really good for the people and trying to get that message across. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it all depends on the circumstance, on the person, his level, his religion. Sometimes you might, you don't, you might be able to have, you might be like honey, as they say to a person where he wants to be around you. And, and, and yeah. that's the case. And he might be listening to music or doing things he ain't supposed to do. But from you standpoint, being good with this individual, he wants to be around you. And you might be the one yeah. that can get to him with, you know, eventually yeah. drop seeds here and there where he might give up the music or give up what he's doing that he ain't supposed to do. And may Allah yeah. forgive us all for our shortcomings. You know what I mean? So I mean. it's all about Hikmah. Like the brother said, he's in the USA. So. It's either it's more difficult, but even here now, you know, you got you go to certain places in the Middle East, you walk into certain places, music blasting everywhere. You know what yeah. I mean? You and you still can't go and say turn it off. Like they're gonna look at yeah. you like, Yo. you know what I mean? Like he said, you go to barbershop, you're gonna be getting jumped out here. You might, you might, you might get jumped out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So wisdom. Yeah, so wisdom. Man. A lot, a lot yeah. That's man. I mean, yeah. Allah, I mean, Allah, I mean. So. We're talking, alhamdulillah, we're talking about, uh, about the, the permissibility of music and the instruments, which are the, the duff in particular, which is only permissible for the uh, sisters to use it within the sisters surrounding. So what about beatboxing and uh, uh, what we call the a cappella, the beatboxing? It's quite, it's quite a trend 
Uh, as we know I here thought, in um, I don't know, like, like, like the yeah, brother yeah. said earlier, man, that's, that's what I thought you was asking earlier about the voice when it comes to that type of situation. I don't know yeah. what the ulema say about it, you know what I mean? And yeah. like the brother Mir earlier said, it might be in the content, the, the context of how you're using it. Man, I, that I can't answer. I want, the, I want that yeah, answer I too. Maybe a man, yeah. enlighten me, bro. I mean, yeah. first of all, I ain't hear nobody beatbox since the 80s. So, you know. <laughs> Bro, you ain't yeah. been, a, you ain't, you, wait till you start, turn on, see, you ain't been, you ain't been going on Instagram lately. I yeah, think. I mean. You, yeah, might, see, I mean, you I mean, might see a whole Muslim band group beatboxing, got a beatbox ahead, a lead singer here. You got I mean, <laughs> you think of the times of, you know, the wars that the Muslims fought and the poetry that they used to recite to motivate one another. You sure. know, these poems were like the access road to the Quran, meaning the Quran is the highway. Yeah. Mm. The poems used to be parallel in meaning, you know what I'm saying, to the Quran. That's right, that's right. And so, and this is the usul of, you know, poetry that was permissible is that it coincide with the message of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So now when a person takes this example and say, see, the Sahaba, they was doing poetry, but then you turn the poetry into something that does yeah. not coincide with the Quran, then it becomes yeah. something that's distasteful and it becomes something that, you know, doesn't have the same merit or virtue. Yeah. So, and, you know, May Allah reward the brother Mutar for taking it, you know, a shot at doing the poetry. <laughs> and he, he did a great job. I listened to some exactly of it. Like like, if it's going to get done, you know, exactly who like someone who actually been versed in the field and can utilize what's mm -hmm. permissible with an old skill set, you know, mm -hmm. and, and do something that's parallel to, you know, the Quran or the message of the Quran. Yeah. Now with the beatboxing, to me, this is my opinion. You can take it or leave it. I'm not a scholar. Yeah. If it's done in, I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> if it's done in the same fashion as it was in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? At that time, if you understand the origin of it is because it came from people who couldn't afford a radio. Oh, yeah. man. So when it goes back to like Dougie Fresh, <laughs> it used to be expensive to get a, a real boom box. If you ain't had no money, you're making the beat with your mouth. Yeah. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So everything came from poverty. If you want to know the origin Facts. of the things that it came from ingenuity that came from people who was impoverished and didn't have. Yeah. So it's like, oh, it's so history one now. Same thing with the yeah. pants sagging. We didn't have a belt. And no uncle, <laughs> so they might be a little bit bigger. So you swing it on the bar for your uncle. And yeah, the origin of these behaviors, they just blind follow. And there's a narration that the prophet Sayyid Sala mentioned that would be a time that we will follow the disbelievers. To the point where we're following them in the lizard hole. That's right, right. You understand? So we living in that time. We see it. We see it. So this is me just giving my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't think it looks classy or you know something honorable mm -hmm. for someone to be sitting here. You know, this is Islam. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Or whatever, by <laughs> <laughs> the believers. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Like that. Me, yeah, it might take a little. It might drop his masculine level a little down. You gonna look retarded? I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You're not seeing it. Like yeah, you can't, even had, even dropping a hundred push-ups and then getting up. Yeah, body. you're looking a little <laughs> weird, man. You talking about <laughs> someone that a law favored with Islam? Allah Islam. gave you Islam. He gave you honor when he gave you Islam. Islam. Yeah, right. He gave you an identity by way of his messenger but the, the, with the sunnah. Yeah. So all yeah. of these things that we've been gifted, you're going to throw that away 
by standing up here and, 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 <laughs> and this becomes a gateway to music. Sa, sure, sa, you're, sa. Right, you're right, you're right, yeah. Because it's not being done for the same reasons as people who were poor, like I said. You yeah. know, because you're trying to get as close as you can. I'm going to put a, a wall right here. You want to lean on that wall so much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. much, so close, until you end up going over the wall. Yeah, it's yeah. fine, lock You know what I'm saying? And then you may not never make it back over the wall. Long mm. time. So me... Love time. And I say this as, you know, a reminder to myself, first and foremost, when we see them walls, just try to go the other way. Okay. Because you know there's a wall there. You know you can't get through it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a wall. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But by someone's lowly desire, they're going to find some kind of mechanism to throw over the wall, climb <laughs> the wall, get over the wall, and then yeah. stand on the top of the wall and call all the other people. Um, Come to the wall. Look, I made it up here. Come on, y'all. Y'all can make it too. This is yeah. the guidance. Yeah. That's the actual <clears throat> analogy that's suitable for what takes place. Is that once one believer makes it over there, hmm. you call the other people to it. Yeah, right. So, no. and, and so, Allah reward you, Akhi. Jazakallah khair. So, I mean, so yeah, the voice we made clear. Yeah. Beatboxing. That's still in court, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the jury court. still out, man. You ain't thrown out of court yet? <laughs> nah, I ain't get thrown out of court. Nah. Yet. But you know, I, I reward you, Aki, man. I mean, I stay. I, I I got a role now, brother, man, man. You know, you know. But I appreciate you for put for, for put me on it. You know what I mean? I nah, appreciate no problem, this, man. No Let's problem. do it many, many, many more times, Aki. Inshallah. You know? Inshallah. I, I have to meet up with my partners, man. But I just want to. Let's do it again anytime, man. Let's make it happen, brother. Um, yeah. Inshallah. I need the video. Send it to me, though, bro. Yeah. And tell yeah. the Philippine, brother, I'm going to call you when you with him. Tell him yeah, I'm on the deals. Yeah, I'm going to I'm yeah. call you on FaceTime, throw the phone right at him, man. Gotta yeah, him. that's he right. Very angle with this dial, I could. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. But just like a lot care, brothers. I appreciate that, man. Sorry I got a bell out. I think you probably only had like 20 minutes left anyway, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. No, so yeah, I apologize. Yeah. Loon, Amir yeah, got yeah. it. He, he got it, man. I appreciate that for even um, having me on. Luck and luck here for being with you. Uh, Allah reward you, brothers, and let's get it popping. Once it's finished, send it, send a video to me, inshallah. I mean, inshallah. All right, inshallah. man, get some lines to my nephews out there. And nieces, I will, everybody. inshallah. All right? I will, inshallah. Okay, bro. Take care. Take care. Salam to Allah. So, brother Loon, barakallah fiqh. I mean, brother Amir, subhanallah. Um, now let's move on to the third part. Basically, you know, I mean, being in the industry, you know, before rapping and singing and so forth, the the harms of actually listening to music, you know, um, from from its uh, mental impact on oneself and also physical. Uh, I've read a book about uh, about uh, the music made me by Doctor Gohar Mushtaq, and, and there were a lot of a lot of things that. Uh, composers and and lyrics were also written down inside the book to met to to inform that how the lyrics can also impact a person to to suicide and do something crazy. So I mean, what would you advise um, us as youth with regards to actually listening to music and so forth? And the well, yeah. some of the harms, you know, yeah. most prevalent when it comes to music is that music places hypocrisy in the heart. That's the places nifak in, in the heart. The music is the voice of the shaitan. Right. It's the adhan of the shaitan. Mm -hmm. The music takes one away from the Quran. All right. So these are the harms that's most prevalent, meaning mm -hmm. these are the ones that are most consistent and mm -hmm. the most damaging. Meaning the third, the latter is the worst. Because if music takes you away from this book of Allah or the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. then at that point, you understand? One mm -hmm. is in grave danger. All right. Oh, grave God. danger. Meaning if you go in your house and the Quran is sitting in your home collecting dust. Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. It becomes a piece of furniture in your house. It just sits there. Haven't been opened in months, maybe even years. Not even a single ayah 
a single ayat has been recited or read or pondered on. Allah. You spend all those days leading up to the abstinence of the Quran or the abstaining from reading or listening to the Quran, listening to the voice of the shaitan. What do you think enters into the hearts? Yeah. Right? Now, from a more, you know, literal perspective, music is like the soundtrack to your emotions. Because you mentioned yeah. how people commit suicide or fall into all kinds of haram acts because the music that they choose while committing those acts mm -hmm. coincide with the emotions mm -hmm. that are present at the time. For example, when one is about to go out to do some harm to an individual, yeah. on his way there, he's driving and he's listening to a song that says, shoot him, kill him, stab him when you see him. Shoot him, kill him, stab him when you see him, or whatever, right? Because yeah. that's the mode that he's in. Yeah, yeah. So that's that right. is the shaitan egging him on. He's mm -hmm. already in the wrong state of mind. Yeah, you're right. But now he puts on the adhan of the shaitan. Mm -hmm. Now is intensified. Mm -hmm. So just a thought becomes his face now. Everything, he just looks like he's on his way to do something yeah. extremely crazy. Yeah. And there's nothing between the place he left to the destination that can stop him. Mm -hmm. Other than what we know, you know, is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. But if this person has removed itself from that shelter, from that security, and abandoned in the very speech that will guide him, mm -hmm. then he's on a course to doing something that may be extremely detrimental, not only to his life here, but to his akhirah as well. You understand? Lost. Same thing yeah. with zina. Zina, once again, is an emotion. It's mm -hmm. a lustful emotion. But look what the people do. They play the same song that contributed to it. Right. Oh, Habibi. 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> anti hayati and all this like you know this stuff here they go into this so now what you're doing is you're playing the soundtrack to the haram this is the shaitan now he's egging you on so even if you wanted to convince yourself not to go forward look at what music you chose all right right yeah you're right so now, here we go. I can't live without you. I need you. I crave you. All of these statements. And next thing you know, boom. Commit is in. You're right. You understand? So people know this, but because the shaitan has deceived them, yeah. they believe that it's a remedy, but it's really the disease. Mm -hmm. They come home mad. They press play. They think that's the remedy. No, oh, yeah. Feel better now. Yeah, you don't feel better. Yeah, you just right. feel like you've consulted someone, so you mm -hmm. think you got it off your chest. Mm -hmm. But you've only, you know, what I'm saying, further intensified it in your heart. All right. So now the action that follows could be, like I said, extremely detrimental to your, you know, life in this world and in the hereafter. You know, so these harms, for example, Allah says in the Quran, whosoever turns away from my remembrance, his life will be made tight and narrow, be constricted on the day of resurrection. And we shall raise him with the blind. Listen to the threats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another place, he says, whoever turns away from the memories of Allah, he will hurl him into a stern punishment. Ya Rabbi, ya Allah. 
To be hurled into a punishment is abrupt. It's not gradual. Abrupt, immediately, tossed. In the Quran, Allah says, Satan has mastered them and caused them to forget the memories of Allah. Those are shaitan's party. They're his bull shaitan. They're the party of shaitan, and shaitan's party shall assuredly be the losers. So Allah is telling you, this party right here, guaranteed to be losers. Mm -hmm. So now with these warnings, these threats from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repetitively throughout the Quran and the Sunnah, Mm -hmm. Now you have been given the tests and the answers. Mm -hmm. If you fail, then that means the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal is just. You can't complain. Mm -hmm. You're right. You've been given the tests and the answers. Mm -hmm. You name an establishment in this dunya that gives you the tests and the answers. Name a university. If everybody would be doctors, if you could just go to medical school, get the tests and the answers, everyone would be doctors. Everyone, right. Everyone would be successful. Right. This is why success is with the believers. Yeah. Those who follow the commands of Allah, those who abstain from what he forbid, those yeah. that follow the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa those who abstain from what he forbid, those that are successful. Because they've been given the tests and the answers. Mm -hmm. How do you fail if you got the tests and the answers? Yeah, Almost Allah's given us. Yeah, Allah. No. Allah's given us the an answers, yeah. Who al Karim? You know what I'm saying? Allah is the most generous, the most kind. Right. You're right. Nah. Allah Ustan. Yeah, you're right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the way, the method, He's given us the answers. We have to just follow, obey. And we and trust him. Know that this is the right path. This is the right thing. That he, it will not. It's a. It's a hundred percent profit. It, it's. A, it's. It's not a fifty-fifty. Allah, ghaniyun anna. Allah is, is. He doesn't need us. We need him. Exactly. Allah. See another thing. You know. You know about abandoning the Quran. It's something that you know. I read in Al Fawaid, the book by Ayyam, Rahim Allahu Taala. And he mentioned abandoning the Quran is of various types. Firstly, mm -hmm. refusing to listen to it and believe in it or to pay any heed to it. This is the first and most detrimental. Refusing to listen to it, believe in it, or paying attention or pay any heed to it. Secondly, mm -hmm. he says seizing to act on it and abide by what it declares as lawful or unlawful, even mm -hmm. if one reads it and believes in it. Mm -hmm. Understand? Look at look at the conclusion. Ceasing to act upon it and abide by it, what declares as lawful and unlawful, even if he reads it and believes in it. Mm -hmm. How many of us do that? La Mustaan. Third, he said to abandon judging by it and being judged by it. Allah. Abandon judging by it. And being judged by it. So these are the individuals who be who blind follow. You know, saying they're Mashiach. When the Quran tells you, when the, the Quran, Allah judges by it. Judges us by it. But you listen to, you know, a misguided individual that tells you, follow my judgment. My judgment mm -hmm. says. Music is permissible. All right. My judgment says even the men can play the duff. My judgment. Not the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A long time. But the judgment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, and abandon judging by it and being judged by it, whether in the fundamentals of the faith or in its branches, and to believe that it does not beget certainty and that its textual wordings do not beget sure knowledge. Stuff for the law. He said, fourthly, neglecting to ponder over it or comprehend it, not seeking to uncover 
what the speaker intended by it. Mm. Listen to that. Neglecting to ponder over it. Mm. How many of us, sometimes even during the month of Ramadan, we just read it. We want to finish all 30 jewels before Ramadan is over. But we have yeah. that pondered over a single ayah. Yeah, that, that's uh, another major. Why are they, Mahi? Even in prison, I spent maybe nine Ramadan. Allah, of course. You know what I'm saying? I have not always completed the Quran. Every time I read it, I ran into something as if I never seen it before. Because of pondering over the meaning, sometimes it becomes so heavy that I just mm -hmm. closed it. I try to stay on the schedule, Jews, uh, Jews a day, a Jews a day. But sometimes it'd be so heavy, I just close it and sit there and just ponder. Allah, cool. So look at what the Sheikh Rahimullah Ta'ala is saying. Neglecting mm -hmm. to ponder over it, comprehend it, not seeking to uncover what the speaker intended by it. The speaker being Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. All right. Fifthly, to abandon seeking a cure or healing through it in respects to diseases of the heart and its maladies, but rather to seek healing for such illnesses from other than that, meaning seeking alternative methods of healing opposed to seeking healing in the Quran. For mm -hmm. your disease in your heart, you go seek counseling from the Kufar. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you can make the shard over people who don't have your best interests. All right. All right. right. You sit there amongst your peers seeking refuge in them. Yo, meet me here, man. I got to talk to you. Did you speak to Allah first? Allah, you're right. You're right. Speak to yeah. Allah first. You might not even want to talk to this guy after that. Just raise your hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make dua. Consult mm -hmm. your Lord. You probably yeah. feel so much better to call him back and say, you know what, never mind, I'll see you tomorrow. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for, you know, for showing up, though. I appreciate it. I'm not coming. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Right? Yeah. So, you know. You're right, bro. You're right. You're right. And this is why, you know, this is why we have to study our religion. You know? You're right. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Talib al-Im, Farida to ala kuli Muslim. Right, seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. Allah. You know, in this hadith, he doesn't mention the extensive knowledge of the scholars, but knowing the basic fundamental principles of your religion, so you can navigate through this dunya. You cannot navigate through this dunya when you don't have knowledge and understanding of what the dunya is and why Allah created it, what He created it for. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What is permissible for you to have in it and what's prohibited for you to, you know what I'm saying, what you should abstain from. Knowing these things is knowledge. This is knowledge. Yeah. Sufficient knowledge so that you can navigate through this worldly life so that you can get to, by Allah's mercy, this paradise that he created for the believers. I sure want to go. I know I want to go. Yeah. I need to go. You know, it's not so much I want to, I need to go. Where else is there to go? There's only two places. I need to go there. Yeah, you're right. Everybody want to go. Everybody want to go. I need to go. There's a difference. Well, I want to and I need to. But how you going to want and need something and do everything that contradicts what you want? That's a hypocrite. Right. That's why it puts hypocrisy in the heart. You say you want gender, but you're doing everything that contradicts it. Yeah. You yeah. say you love Allah, but you don't love his book. Mm. You know, Allah. you love music more than you love his book. That's hypocrisy. For those that didn't understand when I said it puts hypocrisy in the heart, that's hypocrisy. That's nifaq. You want this stuff that Allah has said he provided for us. You can't Allah. get it just because your name Muhammad. Can't get it just because your name is Ashraf or Ahmed, you know what I'm saying? Faisal, whatever. You can't get it. If you Abdul Kareem, Abdul Hakim, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Razak, Abdul Aziz, Abdullah, Amatullah, 
Ubaidullah, Fatima, all these beautiful Muslim names does not guarantee Allah's mercy and entering his paradise that he prepared for us. Right. We have to abstain from one of the most dangerous and detrimental thing that de detrimental things that have you know became so widespread amongst the Muslims. Allah Mustan, may Allah Jazakallah khair, brother. When you're you I, I, I take this as a as a very personal advice to myself first and foremost, and I hope that those who are watching this, brothers and sisters, you know, this is really deep. I mean, we should actually contemplate rather than you know, I mean and completing the Quran is one thing, but understanding it and practicing it is is it's the main purpose, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afarayata the Baruna Quran, Amala Kulubin Akofaduha. May Allah grant us from those who understand the Quran and contemplate and implement. Allahumma Ameen. Ameen. So, uh, this last question I mean, I, um, a lot of those uh, people or brothers or sisters, they might have known, okay, from now, maybe from this discussion that we had, this chat, all right, I know that music now. I have read, I know that music has made me into something bad, something worse, but how do I get out of it? How do I escape this, this trap of the, of, the, of the devil? How do I go, should I go out slowly? Should I go out, you know, jump off the cliff or jump out of the window? What's your advice, brother? We take the advice that was given to the man who killed 99 people. For those of us who know this hadith, a man killed 99 people and he approached the monk and he asked him, is there any toba for me? And he told him no. And he killed the man. But then he approached the scholar, an alam, one who has knowledge and wisdom and asked him, is there toba for me? He said, yes but you must remove yourself from the place in which the sins are being committed. And you must surround yourself with the people that worship Allah. He said, go be with the people that worship Allah. This is the cure. Cause this environment that we live in right now, social media and all of these things, listening to your peers who may be just as ignorant as you are, this will not suffice. You can find peers who fear Allah. You can find an environment where people worship Allah and they fear Allah. Allah. And eventually, this environment and these type of companions will bring nothing but good to you. Because you're surrounded by good. Mm -hmm. And the reward for good is good. So we take this advice. He told him to go be with the people who worship Allah. The people that worship Allah don't listen to music. The people that sincerely, let me rephrase that. The people sincerely worship Allah seeking his bounty, seeking his favor, seeking his mercy, seeking his love, knowledge and everything that's good. They don't jeopardize this request from their Lord by doing something that their Lord forbid. It's just like your parents. If your parents tell you, yes, when you get to college, I'll buy you a car, but you got to get to college, right? Mm -hmm. So you know what you got to do. Yeah. You know what you got to do. You got to do what they tell you to do if you want that car. But if you deviate from their command, mm -hmm. which is for your best interest, then turn around with your hand out like you're supposed to get a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you supposed to get a car? Hold on one second, inshallah. SubhanAllah. Hello? Yeah, you feel you here? Oh, just press um pound.
So brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, I will be back inshallah uh, until brother uh, Abdul Rahman or Abdul, uh, brother Amir is back. Alhamdulillah, I'm back. Yeah, are you back? Alhamdulillah, okay. So you, you can continue brother. And that's deep really. I'm, I'm like, so, but I'm yeah, so like, opportunity I'm for me to back. Back. See, one thing about me, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I was the same way in the street. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell yourself the truth. If right. you lie to yourself, you lie to everybody. If you lie to yourself, you will lie to anybody, yo. Allah must You understand? This is this is this is the gateway to becoming a liar. Known to be a liar because you lie to yourself. Yeah. So you on. can't lie to yourself. You say you want gender, don't lie to yourself. You know what I'm saying? You say you love Allah, don't lie to yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that you just, you know, going to be able to just throw away everything that's hard on. Some of the companions, you know, still possess a lot of deficiencies, even in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, the story of the companion Abdullah, you know, the Prophet said they used to call him Himar. He used to be intoxicated in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ordered him to be lashed. Then he came back around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again intoxicated and the companions, they cursed him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not curse him for he loves Allah and his messenger. Yeah. But he had a deficiency. <clears throat> he used to consume intoxicants. You have some individuals today that will remove, they will make talk fear on you. They will remove you completely from the religion of Islam for drinking intoxicants. But look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his presence. He only established the hudu. He established the punishment for it, but he told the companions, do not curse him for he loves Allah and his messenger. Rahman. No. No. Understand? So this 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 tells us that we're all a work in progress. None of us is perfect. Islam is perfect. The Muslim is not perfect. The only perfect Muslim we ever had was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're right. You're right. We're not perfect. We understand this. But it's not discouraging. It's not a discouraging fact. Yeah. No. It's not discouraging. Because you know that your imperfections can be rewarded to the yeah. point where you will enter the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided. Yeah. Your imperfections, not your perfection, your imperfections could be overlooked by Allah and you enter his paradise. But because you strove for the sake of Allah, you were sincere in your striving by his mercy, inshallah, to barak Allah that we end up in his paradise. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. But for your imperfections, look at the mercy of Allah. You came to him imperfect. You came to him with deficiencies and flaws. And by his mercy, he enters you into his paradise. Inshallah, tabarakallah. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you, me, and our family, and all of the Muslims in the world, oh, those who have left us, and those oh, who have oh, oh, been born, oh. and created, to enter paradise. I mean, I mean, I mean, so, I mean, there are two questions here um, that, that uh, I would like to highlight, and I, if it's possible, with your respect, that you can also uh, sure, share Allah. your thoughts. Uh, about yeah, about music. Um, someone asked, Is music mentioned in the Quran that is haram? Is no, nah. mm -hmm. it's in Surah Luqman. Yep, it's in Surah Luqman. I believe the ayah is number six. Let me ask uh, what is it, man? Yet Takilaha Yajalu Lahum. No, no, is um, Subhanallah. Um, Women and Nasi may yet take the yet take the Hawal. Yeah. Whoever purchases. Yeah. Idol talks, yeah. Yeah, idol talks. Yeah. Women and Nasi may take the Hawal Hadith. Yeah, it is six. Answer me. Yeah, very right. Women and Nasi may yesterday. Lahul Hadith. 
يُدِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَغَيْرِ الْعِلْمِ وَيَتَّخِذَهَا حُزُوًا أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ يَا نَعْمَ صَحْ And a man kind as he who purchases idle talks to mislead from the path of Allah without knowledge and takes it mm -hmm. by way of mockery mm -hmm. for such will be a humiliating torment. So now mm -hmm. if you read the tafsir Ibn Kathir the tafsir of you know Jabari or whoever you know from from those who um, are scholars of tafsir they're all in agreement that when Allah mentions you know, idle talk, this refers to singing, music, you know, etc. So this is something that is established in the Quran, not only by, you know, the ayah itself, but the explanation of it and how the companions understood. Because we follow the understanding of the companions. You know, they are the ones who conveyed the religion to us, the Prophet Sallallahu he brought the religion to the people and his companions were the ones who learned it from him and those that you know came after learned it from them till we get to the three virtuous generations and those that followed them in totality and faith mm -hmm. meaning up to this day they're all under the understanding that the music is what's being mentioned one second inshallah Take your time. Which, which, which side do you need to go to? You need to go in this way or that way? <clears throat> so, um, Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you know, actually reading right. would really help you a lot <clears throat> from actually removing you from ignorance. You can get actually, uh, you know, it's very easy. Either you can get a PDF book or a hard, a hard copy book, singing and music in Islamic perspective by Sheikh Abdullah Al Athari, Al -Athari, Al Athari, right? Or Dr. Gohar Mushtaq's book, right? You know, here, Brother uh, Amir Barakallah is actually emphasizing, no. actually understand, uh, read, right? I'm gonna tell you a book, you know, saying that I believe is extremely beneficial, and yeah. Rahimullah Taala, his brother passed at a very young age, as if Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala put him specifically to leave this gem upon the people. His name is Mustafa Bilal Al Kennedy. Do share it. Uh, I'm trying to find it because I had it. Have it in stock somewhere. So those who are watching this, you know, get the book, find it, buy it online, or try. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna tell you the title. All right. It's very, it. very beneficial book. It's very simple, very yeah. concise, and it, it is no lengthy explanation. It just, you know, gets into the meat of the matter, which is very important when you're trying to abstain from something. It's called Islamic ruling on music and singing. By Mustafa Balal Al Kennedy, he's a brother from Canada, and I believe he was a graduate of Jamia Tislamia in Medina. And you know, he passed away, Rahimullah, at the age of like 36 or something. SubhanAllah. You know, and this was his, one of his last works. So it's almost as if, and Allah knows best, he was left. You know, and this is the same book that the brother Mutar mentioned as well, because for us coming from there, you know, this book was the most impactful for us who already have understanding, and it'd be just as beneficial for those who are trying to find understanding. You know, right. he definitely was a person of the Sunnah, Alhamdulillah. So, you know, definitely something very beneficial. Yeah. And on this topic in closing, because I have um, some affairs I need to deal with. Once yes, again, sir. I want to say thank you, brother, and, 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 and for inviting me and allowing Welcome. me the opportunity to revisit Malaysia without going to Malaysia. You know, I hope that you 
Oh, yeah, I had a beautiful time the last time I was there, seeing so many yeah. young people who love Islam, seeing so many young people who were striving to learn and benefit from, you know, the 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 Quran and the Sunnah and the books yeah. of the trustworthy ulama. Alhamdulillah, tabarakallah, you know, may our brothers continue to strive in this yeah. way. And, yeah. you know, if you fear that, you know, something that you're holding on to cannot be replaced. Mm -hmm. And let me, you know, remind you to remove yourself from this fear. Because there's a narration that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, whoever, you know, whoever abstains for something for the sake of Allah, he will replace it with something better. And I would like to think, you know what I'm saying, that I'm a testament of that. Because everything that I abstain from for the sake of Allah, Allah has replaced it with something better. He replaced it with something better. Meaning I traveled a lot of places, you know what I'm saying, prior to Islam. But as a Muslim, I may have traveled to more countries than I ever did as an artist. So that's one replacement. No. The wealth that I used to have was haram. You know, yeah. by Allah's mercy, you know, Allah has placed me in a situation where the wealth is halal. So it doesn't matter the amount. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't matter the amount. The amount may not have exceeded, you know, what I had before. But the fact that it's halal, it's permissible for me to have, then that's more than enough. You're right. That's You're more right. than enough. That that tops numbers. If you have a single halal dollar in your pocket compared to a billionaire who has all haram money, then you're richer than him. Allah, Allah you're Allah. richer than him. And someone who may have a degree in Oxford or Harvard or Yale or whatever it is, Cambridge, whatever, if he hasn't accepted Islam, then you're smarter than him. Allahu Akbar. Smarter than him. It doesn't matter how many degrees he has on his wall. That's all dunawiyya. We're talking about diniyya. We're talking about matters of the deen. You're smarter than him. So take these concessions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and raise them high. Be proudful. You no, know, be proud. Not prideful, but be proud. Know that Allah honored you with something great. Yeah. And no matter how you know inf inf influential this dunya becomes, or how much the fitna increases, mm -hmm. you hold on to the rope of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Hold on to those who fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and worship Allah in abundance. Those are your worthy companions. Those are the people you want. Those are the people that want to see you make it to Jannah. Mm. Don't wait till adversity strikes. Now you want to be with the people that believe. But even then, the doors remain open. Right. Those doors never close. Mm. But the reason why I say don't wait, because you may not be promised that opportunity. Right, exactly. We'll be with you now. I'm not saying that the doors will ever close. Because if a brother comes to me, near death and all he's ever done was haram i will pick him up and embrace him as my brother in islam as long as he believes in la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah so the doors never close but my advice is don't wait to that point don't wait till you're at your lowest point make that move when you start feeling a decline in your iman immediately go gas it up it's like a person who drives his car and wait to the gas light. Come on, that's crazy. Yeah, they're right. Yeah. Wait to the gas light. Come on. If you see halfway, is that the halfway point? Then get it back to full. Yeah. Don't wait to get all the way to one fourth. And definitely yeah. don't wait to the gas light. Come on. When they get yeah. halfway or even three fourths, go and yeah. fill it back up. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. I say this as a reminder to myself first and foremost, and a reminder to you all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. He's the most generous, the most kind. He's the most just. You know what I'm saying? He's the most just in his reward and his punishment. Don't ever abandon the memories of Allah. Don't ever attempt to replace the speech of Allah with something that is, that, that is detested. Mm -hmm. That is foul in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not abandon good companions. Do not run from the believers. Don't run for fear of the shaitan telling you, oh, they're judging me. They're judging me. I don't want to be around them. They're judging me because I don't have a beard. They're judging me because I want to let my hair out. 
you know, they're judging me because I don't wear hijab. They're judging me. They're not even judging you. They're advising you because they care. Because if the people that surround you ain't saying nothing, obviously they don't care. Yeah. They don't care what you do with your hair. They don't care what you do with your face. They don't care what you do. That is the opposite of love. The people mm -hmm. that love you and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're going to advise you. Allah may not always be soft or gentle because sometimes when you fear for a person, that fear comes out in your voice. Sometimes when you're scared for a person, it comes out in your voice. And it doesn't mean that you want bad for them. It means I'm telling you because of the severity of the matter. And it may sound severe and it may sound harsh or sound firm, but it's the truth. So don't run from the truth. Almost right. time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in that which is pleasing to him. May Allah, Allah make those who are upon, you know, the salihin, ibadah salihin, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who strive hard upon his path, wow. the path of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seeking his bounties in this life and the next. May Allah wow. subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to increase us in knowledge that is beneficial for us in this life and the next. May Allah wow. azza wa jalla tabarakallah ta'ala, may he continue to bestow his mercy and favor upon his blessed ummah. And, and, us and hastening to that which he permits and running from that which he forbid. May Allah give Allah. us strength. May Allah give us guidance. May Allah make us from those who are from the best of the people for the people. Allah, I mean. Uh, oh, brother, let me just, one more thing. I just wanted to confirm uh, the, the book that you mentioned. Uh, is, it, uh, is, it, is the name of the book The Islamic Ruling on Music and Singing by Abu yes. Bilal Mustafa Al-Kennedy? No. Yeah, yeah. So that we just wanted to share it so that uh, the those who are watching this, the audience, the viewers, uh, yeah. they can very small it. book, very concise, right to the point. It establishes yeah. the statements of the all four imams. So you yeah. cannot hide behind the mathahib. And mm -hmm. you know, he goes into some very, you know, intense, you know, uh, uh, proofs and evidences that should hopefully, inshallah, reach the heart. And that the heart that's yearning for Allah's mercy and Allah's favor will turn, will turn to that which is good and pleasing to Allah. Um, Once again, Brother Amir, Jazakallah Khairan. May Allah bless you and Brother Muta for spending your time, your energy with us. I want to thank you on behalf of the organizers. The revivers we want to say barakallahu feek, jazakum allahu khairan. May Allah yeah. raise your status in the dunya and in firdaus al ala in the akhirah. Allahumma amin. Amin, amin, Allahumma amin, ya Rab. Jazakallahu khair. What you have said, barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.